says, I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call to the Lord. He is the worthy of praise, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death entangled me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I call to the Lord. I cry to God for help. And from his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him and to his ears. For the Lord is my rock and my salvation. Amen. 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 So we sing this opening hymn this morning. Bless the Lord. Jesus, who is our peace. 
So we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you. For being for us what we could not possibly be for ourselves. God be the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. While you are still standing, turn to the litany of morning called the Kingdom of God. Follow along with me, if you will, on your program. On that day, the deaf shall hear the words of a scroll, and out of their gloom and darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. And they shall make Christ the Lord, and the shall For the tyrant shall be no more, and the scoffer shall cease to be. All those alert to do evil shall be cut off. Those who cause a person to lose a lawsuit with such a threat And the ransom of the Lord shall return. And come to Zion with singing, everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and silence shall be away. The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He is girded with strength. He has established the world. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from the old. You are Mighty King, lover of justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only to the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did not we prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name? and do many deeds of power in your name? Then I will to them, I will you, away from me, you the The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and tells all that he has, that he has and buys the field. Again, Again. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like uh, that is thrown into the sea and and caught fish of every uh, a net that is thrown into the to the sea and caught fish of every kind. And when it is filled, they threw it drew it ashore sat down and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. Angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called the child, and the Lord Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever comes, welcomes such a child in my name, welcomes me. For the kingdom of God is not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy to the Holy Spirit. Amen. While you are still standing, let us please share in the recitation of the tenets of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who 
Who's the sitting of the Holy Ghost? Born the Virgin Mary, suffered on my child, was crucified dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From which he comes to judge us for the and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the remission of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. It is such a joy to see and to welcome all of you this morning to the uh, Grove Heights Presbyterian Church morning worship. It is an honor to be in your your presence today. Uh, are there any announcements this morning? Uh, Mr. President of the Men's Council. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I would like to thank you for your prayers. I received it went real well, very well. Uh, I'm pretty good now. <laughs> uh, and we got some tomatoes in that kitchen. Anybody want it? Oh, we we saw that one. And tomorrow, we're supposed to be getting watermelon. We'll have them here no later than. In the afternoon. So let me hit the church. Out the two. Oh, what she's saying. Oh, what she's saying. She said, All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Praise God for this day, and we thank Him for blessing us to be a blessing. The women have responded. Uh, yesterday, we assembled bags of torches like this one received this morning. Thank you all so much for responding for Women in Transition. We're still collecting gently used purses, toiletries for homeless women or the homeless ministry. So thank you to the women of the church. Uh, we appreciate it, and also the Women in Transition appreciate it. And we can't just talk about the women because I know there's so many uh, ministries working in this church. So now shout out to all of them. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. This morning, the men of the church were able to go and uh, provide a blessing, a prayer blessing to the homeless men in our community with the shelter. Uh, some of us got there uh, promptly at 5.30. I didn't get there at 5.30. Yeah, I got there right. <laughs> <laughs> I was there by six anyway. I was there by six. But what was amazing, we had a wonderful turnout of the men of the church to help those who are, uh, of course, homeless and uh, are need. And I'm so proud of our men who give up themselves selflessly uh, for those who have less. And I want to thank our president. Thank you, uh, Mr. Price, for the leadership in that. And all, yes, the men, the men. all the men, all the men who are there today, we stand up all the men who are there this morning. Uh, come on, Kevin. I was somewhere not here that gets it back to back bed now. <laughs> Charles, thank you, Pete. Good to have you here. And uh, of course, we had about a dozen men there this morning, and I'm so happy and proud to say we are a blessing to others. Amen. We thank God. Come on, give God a uh, for, for, for that. We'll be starting Vacation Bible School shortly, and I'll, get, I'll give you that announcement uh, real soon. Uh, you've been asking about who are they going upstairs, and the answer is soon. But as I said last week, we cannot go until we get the funding issue addressed. We had a great session meeting this past week, and we're on our way to getting it addressed. It is more involved than what we had initially thought. So it wasn't just simply a matter of fixing a leak. These pipes have been in there for decades, and they're, they're, they're quite damaged from erosion, natural erosion. So we had to take out a wall and to replace piping, a lot of it. Uh, and so we're going to get it fixed, but we predict in about two or three weeks, to say, at the most, two to three weeks. And, but we'll be in there shortly, and I can't, I cannot wait. Can you? I cannot wait till we get back in our sanctuary, and this time we're going to go in with a flare and some real celebration, and to invite others to join us when we go into the new sanctuary. Amen? Amen. I'm looking forward to, to that. Uh, are there any other announcements this morning? Um, is, is Robin Fuller here this morning? I think I saw her come in. Yeah. 
I'm sorry. Are we set for uh, Charleston next month? Yes, we are. On August the 21st, Wednesday, yes, we are set. Um, I'm speaking with... I am speaking with Zenobia Harrison, who is the owner of Fine Day to Travel, and she is currently organizing the list. I sent the last group of participants to her uh, this past weekend, and she's organizing the list to make sure everybody has room. And for those of you who have uh, decided you paid and can't go, um, she is um, sending out group bus. So, well, we're on we are on the 21st of August. It's 21st okay. of August. All right, thank you. No more participants. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, it's 21st, we're going down to Charleston for a day of fellowship and seeing the, the new African American History Museum that was recently opened in Charleston. I hear it's a wonderful exhibit. Of our history there in Charleston. How many have you been there? Anybody been there? You have been there, Charlotte? Great, great. Great, I hear it's on Mary. You've been there? Okay. It should be a wonderful experience. Are there any visitors with us this morning? Are there any visitors with us? Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 <laughs> would, you, would you please give us your names and how you came to be here this morning? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Claude Jay. Recently planning for. Fairfax, New York. Oh, All right. Yes. Previous members of Memorial Presbyterian Church. This is my wife, Janet Gay. My ace to one cold. Janet, did you want to say something there? <laughs> um, former members, again, we, we just moved here. Um, I was thinking this morning, we were on the road. You were thinking for change, okay. Yes, we were on the road this morning. I mean, we were on the road two weeks ago today from New York down to Charlotte. So we have um, moved down. We, uh, uh, Reggie, Reggie Tuggle was my pastor for many, 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 many years. Um, and as Clyde said, we are uh, members, currently members, um, looking for a new church, but we're currently members at Memorial in uh, Roosevelt, New York. And it's happy to, we're happy to be here and to visit with you all. And Reverend Tuggle, when he comes every October, he talks about you all. So we have, every time, I'm sure you get a lot of us come down, anybody in the area, they come to visit. So Not enough. <laughs> this sister has been journeying with us, with me, serving almost 30 years, I guess, yeah. about. So. Yeah. And she's such a wonderful con uh, a member of our church in the world in New York, a great contributor to our ministry there. And so good to have you and her husband. Welcome to Charlotte. Yeah. And welcome to your new church, too, by the way. Amen. 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 God bless you. I invite you now to pass the Lord's peace one to the other. May the Lord's peace be with you. Oh. Will us just come down with the offering? your blessing upon the gifts that were given today in your name. We pray that you will bless this ministry, our virtue of the tithes and the offerings that have been given in your name. So bless the givers who made it possible to sustain the ministry here in the community and through this church. We know that we brought nothing in the ritual, but everything we have has come from your name. And to God be the glory and praise. 
In Jesus' name, I sing the praise of God. So I'm so happy to have this, and we're grateful for those who are involved in that. The prices that lead the way, uh, Jeanette and Marvin Price, call me Bubba, that's not to be disrespectful, uh, but we have a lot of nicknames here in this community, and uh, everybody here to have one, by the way. Is that right, Raymond? <laughs> Is that right, Bebro? Yeah. All these nicknames. And thank Mr. Brown for all his music service. Amen. Mr. Brown is a stalwart. Brother Brown is a stalwart in this community. He is there in season and out of season. Please pray for the health. Yes, I'm going to do that in pray for a new ministry that I proposed to our session on this past week, that we establish you know, a new ministry at Girl Heights uh, community. And I'll give you more of that in detail, but uh, I'm calling it, for the lack of a better expression, but I'll call it the 55 plus ministry here at Girl Heights. And this is for those of us who are at least 55 and older, 
and I'll give you more details of that in writing or in the days coming. But I think we will all benefit from it. But more than just our members, the whole community will benefit from it, I believe, over time. With your participation, with your help, I'll give this to you in writing next week so you can see exactly what we're talking about. And the session met this past week, they approved it, they blessed it, and we pray that you'll participate in making it happen to grow and to flourish. Amen? Amen. Amen. Yesterday, and unfortunately that happened in our nation, you all saw it by now, I'm sure it's been on, on the news constantly since the uh, <clears throat> assassination attempt of uh, Mr. Trump. And uh, I'm sure it caught you unawares, as it caught me unawares. And I, 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 this is now my, my pettiness. What is this? I'm about to say what it's called? Yeah, Pet, it that's right, sorry. This is petty and it's, it's judgmental. What I'm about to say, I'll get to that in just a moment. But at first, I thought it was staged. I mean, I thought this was a, a hoax or something like that. That was my first thought. That somehow this is, but I know it will boost his candidacy. He's going to get some sympathy votes and other supporters coming his way and may end up being reelected. But we have to remember, listen please, we have to remember, assassinations are not new to this country. No, no, no. It's not new. Democrats and Republicans have been assassinated. The word assassin is an Arabic word that goes back to the 11th century. And then Hasim, 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 that was the Arabic word that came out to be assassin. And the Jews, the zealot Jews, used to assassinate Romans. Back in the days of the zealots, they were going out and assassinating uh, Roman governors and those persons in authority. It's not new, but in this case, <clears throat> it's it's a little bit different. And it's different in the sense that we have a divide in the world that perhaps the world has never seen. Are you aware that we're moving more and more away from democracy and moving more toward authoritarianism and despotism? You notice how they're, they're gathering their forces, the, the North Korean and the Chinese and the Putins of the world. They are uniting themselves and they, they don't care anything about democracy or about people. Uh, and so there's a shift, there's a shuttle shift, but even so in this country, the rhetoric has become more, more divisive and more hurtful and quite frankly, more damning and more deadly. Because not only do you have a difference of opinion, that difference may cost you your very life because people don't agree with you, they'll shoot you. And, oh, they'll hunt you down. They'll, they'll, they'll pick you where you live. And there's some folks in this country who are mentally unstable and they're driven by a little bit of ideology here, a little bit of political uh, 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 dialogue there, and they'll, they'll be moved by, and they don't think, you know. And so it just takes someone that they respect to say something foolish, then of course take our capital back. You don't fight, you don't have a country anymore. Someone saying something is, you might think as innocent as that, can move someone to pick up a gun, or worse. There is no room for violence anywhere in the world, certainly in our country. But my sermon to talk about that in more detail in my message this morning, but I want us to pray for this this morning. I'm disturbed what I heard on Fox last night that the Democrats caused this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear that? Did yeah. you hear that statement? Yeah. This is something that Biden felt the crap. It's that kind of poisonous rhetoric, you see, that will cause somebody who is not thinking stable to go into something foolish. <clears throat> We're so divided, and it's not just race, by the way. Part of it is classism. <coughs> those who have against those who have not. So there's a classism element here that our responsibility, yours and mine, is not to play political favorites, except for one. We have one candidate, and his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men, women, and children unto me. Our Lord Jesus Christ is not a Republican, he's not a Democrat. He's not even an American. He's just Jesus. The whole world belongs to him. 
we are disciples of Jesus Christ. So let's set aside our political and partisan affiliations and think about our primary affiliation as a child of God, Jesus Christ. What happened yesterday was certainly demonic, it was wrong, but I have a fear that uh, the repercussions are going to be far-ranging, even beyond November. We have to stay focused. Let's not be driven to cynicism or pessimism, as I said to Yvette yesterday when I first heard the news. This was staged. She said the same thing. And then I caught myself, Lord, help me. And I hope it wasn't staged. I, I just hope that wasn't a gun for political gain. But our responsibility, yours and mine, is to be a faithful Christian. And let's, let's, pray, let's pray for Mr. Trump. Amen. I don't know what his policy is one iota. Let's pray for his mind, for his heart, for his health. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's recovery. And let's not fall into the trap of thinking that all Republicans are demonic. As I've heard some Republicans say about Democrats. Mm -hmm. You vote for a Democrat, you're voting for the devil. I heard that on television too. Mm -hmm. We're not going to say that. That's not our role. Amen. Amen. We have to stay faithful <laughs> to who we are. Amen. And once we lose that, and fall into the, to the, to the category of hating one or the other. We, we lose everything. Keep our eyes on the Lord. And then keep our, that's where we keep our focus. And whether we uh, accept it or not, I'll get to that in the message this morning as well. Okay, I'll get to, the, my, I'll get to my conclusion. I was going to say this morning later on. I know and you know how this is going to end ultimately. Good or bad, evil or righteous, light or darkness. We know the devil's going to lose. That isn't the question. The question is, what side are you on? That's the question. What side are you on? So let's not get confused and say, well, this is devil's doing his work. Yes, he is doing his work. But God is doing the mightier work. And we have to stay close to that. Amen? God bless. I hear some buzzing out there. I don't know what that's about, but. Revive us again.
We would be lost and helpless without the benefit of your Holy Spirit who anoints us and guides us and shows us the way. Your Spirit is our strength. Your Spirit gives us hope. Help us to set aside any fleshly thing that would inhibit us from experiencing a true and authentic relationship with you. You despise hypocrisy. You despise anything that only looks like the part, but is not the essence of the part. Enable us, O oh Lord, to remain true to our faith and true to you. We despise the devil. We denounce all unholiness. We denounce all evil. We denounce all unrighteousness. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we stand on that rock of ages that was not built by the pilgrims, was not built by the Supreme Court, was not built by the office of the presidency of these United States, was not built by the awesome military of this country, but was built by Jesus Christ Jesus Christ himself, and on, on this, the solid rock we stand, all other ground is sinking sand. We've learned to walk faithfully in season and out of season. And the journey set before us by our ancestors, they didn't have all that we have today. They didn't have houses worth anything to live in. They didn't drive around in fancy cars or have fancy clothes to wear. They didn't have a lot of money in their pocket, but they had something that kept them going. They were anchored on that rock of ages. And that rock of ages they passed on to their children, to their children's children, come down to us today that proclaims that Jesus is Lord. Forgive us when we are tempted to act like the world. Oh, the sky is falling. That's what Chicken Little is shouting. The sky is falling. The end is near. We're not going to become cynics or pessimists. We're going to remain true to the light of the world. In Jesus, there is no darkness. Enable us, O oh Lord, to be peacemakers. Give us, O oh Lord, we pray, the strength to forgive. It's sometimes hard for us to do that. But yet, that's what you require of us. You require that we forgive. We need that strength. And we pray for our leadership in this country. All of it. They're so blinded by power, blinded by partisan politics. Blinded by wealth and money. Blinded by privilege. Blinded by race and blinded by their position on this earth. They cannot see the little guy. They cannot see the least, the lost, and the left behind. They cannot see even justice. Because of their blindness, we pray that you will take away that blindness. Enable them, O oh Lord, to see you. To see Jesus. And to humble themselves before your throne and to be guided by an eternal instruction to be guided by an eternal presence that is holy we pray for our leadership in the world and in the country and father we pray for all those who are sick and those who are healing with illnesses we pray today particularly lord for r.a george Amen. have mercy upon him and Veronica, George, we lift them up today. We pray, O oh Lord, that you will bless him with restored health. We thank you for his faith, for his leadership here in this congregation. We pray, O oh Lord, today for others in our congregation. All the names that were called out this morning, have mercy upon them. And we pray that you will restore their health. Pray for Kim, Malone, and 
mother and for the health and recovery. It's good to see Paris in the church this morning. As you watch over you. Father God, we walk ever walking with our hand in yours. And we thank you for your leadership and for your strength. Now, Lord, finish your bless this congregation. Bless every woman, every man, every child, every family. For those who are supporting us online and they're watching us today on the streaming channels and Zoom, bless them. And they're, as they're watching from, our, from their homes, bless David and Vivian Madison. Keep them, we pray. And others who are joining us, Bill Holder, Lord, and his wife. We thank you for all of them and all of us. In Jesus' name, help me preach this word today with clarity and power. Give me utterance. Fix my mind to stay focused. Keep my mind clear and my heart pure. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that the woman took and mixed into a large amount of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. I've been talking about the kingdom of God, and this is my third sermon on this topic. And uh, I, I'm, being, I'm being led by another spirit in me to talk about the Holy Spirit in the month of August. We don't talk much about the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to spend a lot of time on that coming for the month of August because that's where our uh, bread and butter is. The, 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 the Holy Spirit helps us interpret Scripture. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Spirit leads us in ways you don't ever anticipate. But you have to attune yourself to the presence of God in your life. You'll see new things. Your faith will grow and you'll, you'll prosper. So, but, but in fact, your seed belt's got this coming. We talk about the Holy Spirit in the month of what month? Oh, All right. Today I want to talk about how the kingdom grows. Last week I talked about the enemy of the kingdom. I talked about the farmer who planted good seed in his ground and yet he planted good seeds and yet weeds grew up. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Last week? Well today I'm going to go a little bit of a different direction and talk about uh, how the kingdom grows. We know uh, the destructive power of the adversary. We know that he he is determined to rob all Christians of joy, if that were possible, or, or peace. But we've learned in Scripture that the peace that God gives us didn't come from the world, and therefore the world can't take it away. But we have to remember to, to be anchored, not in the world, but on the Lord. That's why, you see, we shouldn't get overwrought with the machinations of this world. The world's a mess. Amen. <laughs> Everybody who's alive knows that. It, it's a mess whether you live in Gaza or Israel. It's a mess whether you're a Democrat or Republican. It's a mess whether you're white or black. It's still a mess. Whether you're rich or poor, everybody's in this mess together. It's like soup. Yeah. 
We're all in together. But today I want to talk about the kingdom of God. I read to you this morning two parables taken from Matthew chapter 13, beginning in verse 31. And uh, these are two parables that undoubtedly you've read before, you've heard before, you know, that they're common parables. But I, I lift them up today, particularly today in the wake of yesterday's assassination attempt, because I think they have meaning for us right now. And they have meaning for us uh, in this church in particular, because we are a small church. And I want to start with that, the fact that we are a small church. What are we? Church. But a powerful church. Yeah. Yeah. So let's finish the sentence. We're a small church. Okay, let's get the same here. <laughs> We're a small church. One more time. We're a small church. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Because that's the mustard seed. That's the mustard seed parable. So we shouldn't get overly impressed with mega churches, 20,000 members, 5,000 members, and all that. I mean, I'm glad they have 5,000 members. I've been to some of those churches. Right? Uh, but, and I've been impressed with the crowd. The, but the crowd has no more power than Greer Heights Presbyterian Church. Amen. We're a small church. Oh, gosh, you're smart people. We're a small church, but a powerful church. Amen. And our power, you see, does not emanate from our smallness, but it emanates from the source of our power, that is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 So back to the parable. Parable Matthew chapter 13. It's, it's a very good part parable. Jesus is talking about a man who, who advances a, a small seed. He said, it's the smallest of all seed, but yet it grows into the largest of all plants. Small seed. Small seed grows into the largest of all plants. But I want to begin with this preamble. The preamble is this. And if you forget anything that I say today, or everything that I say today, don't forget what I'm about to say to you next. And that is this. Jesus never doubted the outcome. Uh, okay, I'm elaborate. When he was hung on the cross, people doubted. That he was indeed the Son of God. They believed that once he died, his mission, his purpose, his, his reason for coming would die with him. But Jesus never doubted. For some, the cross represented defeat. And when he died, he that said that again, death won. Death was the, the answer to all of our ills. Everything boils down to one dying. You cannot get beyond death. But for Jesus, he never doubted. Gotta remember that. Jesus never doubted the outcome or the ability of God to accomplish his purpose. And I have to say that over and over and over again. See, so because he said that, I'm saying this to you us this morning. We do not need to be fearful about the future. The future. Amen. Amen. We do not need to fear the future. As a matter of fact, it is almost sacrilegious to be afraid of the future. I'm not afraid of the future. None of us should be afraid of the future. Oh gosh, y'all, I'm missing something here this morning. Don't get caught up in MSNBC or Fox or CNN or your neighbor's talk or what happens at the Harris Theater or Publix. Don't get caught up in those discussions. Because if you do, you lose sight of the seed, you see. Do not despair nor faint in tribulation. Be clear, Jesus said, be clear. He says, in this world, you're going to have trouble. But go back and read John 16, 33. In this world, you're going to have trouble. Be a good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. That's what it says in John 16, 33. In this world, you will have trouble. Be of good cheer. Why? Because I have overcome the resurrection. So after the resurrection, the complete confidence of worldwide uh, nature of kingdom was established. After the resurrection, conquest was assured. Conquest over what? Over evil. I have to use that word on purpose because I don't want you to think it's conquest over the Republicans. 
Nothing to do with the Republicans or the Democrats. Talk about evil. Don't you see? Democrats evil too. What does it say in Romans 3 23? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is not a political message, folks. I'm talking about the conquest. The kingdom of God couldn't care. It has nothing at all to do with Republicans or Democrats or even America. The kingdom of God has no boundary, no borders, no flags to sustain it. Don't you understand? The, 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 uh, America is a, is a great country, but so is Africa. That's a great continent, not a country. <laughs> I say that because they had a jeopardy the other day, some questions about Africa. And the question was, uh, I forget the question, but they referred to Africa as a country. It's not a country. It's a continent. With a lot of countries in it. But the resurrection, when it came, it assured conquest of victory over sin. And so I like this passage where it says it took only a few followers, simple, common people, to grow the kingdom of God. I repeat that. It took only a few followers, simple people, common people, fishermen, maybe a farmer. Didn't have much education. But he used them. And those few people, they heralded the road to build the kingdom of God on earth. Now, why is that important? It's important for this simple reason. Listen, please. Can you imagine? Of course, you cannot, neither can I. But can you imagine all of the prophets, all of the people who came before Jesus? who prophesied, who pretended to be the all-in-all, representing all that is religious and holy and righteous and spiritual. All of them came. They, they did great things. They died, and they stayed dead. Yeah. <laughs> Only Jesus got up yeah. from the grave. Yeah. And when he got up, he declared, for the first time in, in, in Bible history, he declared all power in heaven and earth has been Given unto me. Yeah. All power, not, not some, but, but all power has been given unto me. And so when you understand who Jesus is, you can understand what I say to you. There was no doubt in his mind that God's purpose would be accomplished. There was no doubt of the outcome. Yeah. I don't want you to leave here today or watching at home on your televisions or on your computers that there's some ambiguity about the future. There is no ambiguity about the future. We know the devil is going to be defeated. Mm -hmm. We know that light will overcome darkness. We understand that righteousness will prevail. That isn't the question. The question is, Thank whose you. side are you on? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. Are you standing on the side of righteousness or not? Are you going to become a purveyor? of skepticism and hatred and bitterness and cynicism? Or are you going to stand on your rock of salvation, which is the light of the world? If you walk around hopeless, then there is no hope. We are the hope of the world. We are. We not like that uh, responsibility, but that's not your call. Go back and read Matthew chapter 5. It says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. And if we lose our brightness, lose our sight, our, our light, lose our saltiness, where would the world be? I look at it this way. As much as the, the world's in trouble with churches, can you imagine how much more the world would be in trouble if there were no churches? I know churches are a mess. We're not always been faithful and discharged in the light. But still, we, we bring some light in this world of darkness. That's part of our responsibility to lift up that light. And so we get to the mustard seed. It says we're small but powerful. But powerful. Say it again. We're small but powerful. Oh, that's right. That's what we are at your heights. We're small in number, but we are powerful. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. Now the second part is this leaven about the leaven bread. This is really what I get to this morning. See, I, I'm not a baker, and heaven knows I've never baked. I don't think anything. I don't know if I haven't baked anything. I tried to cook a pancake once, and I made the mistake of not following the recipe. That was my fault. 
I put some I put some flour in a vat. I put some milk in, and some eggs in it and mix it up. And I said, well, that looks like baking batter to me. <laughs> I poured it on the skillet. I buttered my skillet down, and I, it came out brown like a pancake. It looked like a pancake. It didn't taste like it. <laughs> but I put some syrup on it. But about an hour later. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to that. Jesus talked about this thing called leaven. Now you know, all of you, especially those of us who bake, you know that how leaven is. You put it in, in dough and it, 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 it works. It permeates throughout the entire dough and it makes the dough smooth with baking cake or bread. Let me tell you how leaven works. Write this down. Three, three ways in which leaven works. My, this, I wish I could say this is from my own mind, but it's not. I did some research and found out how leaven works. First off, leaven works silently and it works inwardly. And that's what leaven works in our spirit. God works in us. and But he works in people. He works in people like those of us in Girl Heights, those of us who yield our hearts to God. That's how it works. When we yield our hearts to God, that's the leaven working. And you see, it works in us, and it does so through the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit bears witness to the truth as revealed to us in Jesus Christ. It starts to work quietly, and, and you can't see it. But you see, the Holy Spirit, it it, it, uh, it, it it convicts us of all sin. Yeah. And if you think you are sinless, you have not been convicted. You are not being honest with yourself. Uh, you, you can't point your finger at anybody on the planet and think that they're wrong without pointing to yourself at the same time. Yeah. Because the Holy Spirit convicts of all sins and invites us to accept. The Holy Spirit invites us to accept. The Holy Spirit invites us to accept. Jesus Christ Amen. as Savior. But the Holy Spirit works quietly and inwardly. Uh, I, I remember the story, you know, you read my book, A Journey Through Grace, and that, there's a chapter in that book about finding my dad. My dad in his early years was a scoundrel, by his own words, by the way, he was a scoundrel. He didn't just leave me and my mother in desperate and, and in poverty, but he left us in a very bad way. We had a difficult time for a while. So when I found my dad in 2005, Went to Detroit and finally we finally had a quiet conversation that evening downstairs in the basement. And, and he said to me these words, said, son, when I was a young man, you wouldn't have liked me. I was, I was not a good man. By his own words, he says, I was a womanizer. I gambled, I drank. I was not a faithful husband. I, I, I ruined my children. By his own words, he says, I ruined my children. He says, you... Look at you, referring to me. I have multiple degrees, college degrees, and advanced degrees beyond that. None of my kids went to college. And then he said to me these words. It wasn't until I turned 47 and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior that my life changed. But by then, the damage was done. I had ruined my children, ruined my marriage. I couldn't even play catch up. You know, catch up. Do all. Some things are like you don't get a do-over in. Sometimes what you see is what it is. You ain't going to change it, you see. But he said, Jesus Christ changed my life, you see. And Jesus Christ is like the Holy Spirit. It gets in you. It works silently and quietly, but your life is changed. And when your life is changed, people around you notice it, you see. But see, it's like the, Holy, the power that you have is akin to the power. Okay, here it is. This sanctuary right now has light on. You can't see it. You can't feel it. It's silent. Electricity is silent. But you can't live, you know when it's around. You, you, the, the atomic energy is, is, is silent. But it's, it's a powerful power. The, the power from the sun, the most powerful power in the universe. But it's quiet. You can't see it. And that's what your life is when you interact with others. So I want to say to us, first off, it's silent and it's quiet. But the second aspect of, uh, of, uh, of that is love is the same way. Love doesn't make a lot of pretense. It's not loud, but you can always tell when love is present. Yeah. It, it, it's tangible in some way. When you are driven by a love spirit, you cannot hide it. You cannot keep it from anybody. Yeah. But the second way that, that leaven works, it works, it works continuously. 
When you put leaven in bread, it doesn't stop until it gets permeated and saturates the entire batch of dough. So I'm told, I don't bake. <laughs> but it just keeps going and going and going. You see, you, you can't see at work. You can't see uh, yeast at work, but it's always working. It reminds me when I read over there in Psalm 121. I looked in the hills. From what's coming with my help, my help what? Coming from the land. And it says, Behold, he keeps watch over Israel. He shall neither slumber nor sleep. Right. Even while you are sleeping, God is watching over you. Even as you're journeying through difficult and dangerous situations, God is still watching over you. There's never a time, never a time when God is not watching over you. I have to say that because there are times when you're overwhelmed. You think because of grief or burdens or financial shortfalls, you have, you have money needs in your life, you have health needs in your life. Oh my God, oh my God, where is God? He's right there. But the second thing I want to say about God is this. Leaven works by contact. If you want to save your heights, if you want to save your family, if you want to save your neighborhood, you have to get involved in the community. You've got to get involved with your family, and you got to get involved with your neighborhood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish we had a stronger neighborhood. Well, make it so. Yeah. You are the neighborhood. You are your neighbors. Yeah. You take the love of Christ in you, and you, you rub shoulders with, your elbows with your neighbors, you see. And this is not a new story. Go back and read John chapter 1, verse 41. It, it's always... Growing your church has always been done one person at a time. One life change at a time. One life enlightenment at a time. One rebirth at a time. That's what happened when Andrew recognized that Jesus was the Messiah. John chapter 1, verse 41, it says the first thing that Andrew did was go and find his brother, Simon, Peter, and he brought Simon to Jesus. He didn't invite him, he brought him. But didn't stop there. It says John brought James. Then we want to say that, and Jesus found Philip, and Philip found Nath and found Nathaniel, and on and on and on. This is somebody found you and brought you to Jesus. In my case, it was my mother. Thank God for her. But I had brought a lot of people in my lifetime to the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they found Jesus, they were reborn. I remember a few weeks ago, Yvette and I had a chance to go to Chautauqua, which is a wonderful environment in upstate New York. And uh, it's been described as an adult camp for, uh, or it's a, a summer camp for adults. It's called a summer camp for nerds and all that. We had a lot of famous speakers there and um, uh, some wonderful inspiration. It's, it's for body, uh, mind, and spirit kind of experience. But one of the speakers there was Father Greg Boyle. You know the name Father Greg Boyle, a very famous priest out in California who worked with a lot of gang members. And he was going into the gang neighborhood, the rough neighborhood, ruffians. And these were gang members, drive-by gang bangers and all that. And he was able to introduce him to Jesus Christ. Not by word only, but by association with them. He got involved in their community, in their lives. And some came to Jesus. We talked to one man, Maurice, who's in jail. He went to jail, he called us at age 19. He got out at age 49. Spent 30 years in prison. That's what he told you back to me. Now he had become a coordinator in what, in what is called the homeboys. And for the past 36 years, Father Greg Boyle has brought hundreds of former gang members to Jesus Christ. By his what association with them. So you're not in this world by accident. You're not left here by accident. If you're in the world, you've got a purpose. Rub shoulders with your neighbor. You go to school tomorrow. Rub shoulders with your neighbor when September comes. Rub shoulders with your schoolmates. Let them know who you are. Let them know who Jesus is. When you go to work, those of us who are still working, rub shoulders with your neighbor. Interact with them. Get to know them. Let, let them get to know the Jesus in you. And see what change you will bring into the world. It all comes down to leaven bread. We're small, but powerful. But powerful. 
But you see, the power is not us. The power is in us. Greater is he who is in us, you see, than he who is in the world. Amen. So don't don't despise our smallness, but celebrate our power. Yeah. Oh, come on now. Let's celebrate, let's celebrate our power. And when we do that, the church will begin to grow by our interaction with them. And, sharing with, and that's how the kingdom of God grows. It grows quietly. It grows silently. It grows with purpose. And it grows indeed inwardly. Yes. Take the message of God outside these walls and let's make a difference in the world. No point in condemning the darkness. That's a life, that's a fool's journey. Light a candle. Yes. We're small, Power. but powerful. Power. Tell that to the world. Give God some praise this morning. Amen. Oh, come on, let's do it. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. As we celebrate, the door of the church is open. If you have no church home, I want you to know the door of this church is open to you. And we invite you to come today and give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. As we stand and sing softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling us. Won't you come? The door stands open. Won't you come this morning? So.
I challenge you this morning to be part of the growth of the kingdom of God, to be the seed. We're small but powerful. Be the leaven and the bread. Work quietly, silently, but continuously. Rub shoulders with those. If you don't even like them, but rub shoulders anyway. Let the goodness of God pour through you onto them. Yeah. Let the words coming from your mouth be words of encouragement and hope. Don't become a cynic and a pessimist. Promote the love of Christ. Now may the love of God, the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ, the communion of the Holy Spirit, rest with each and every one of us. Now henceforth and forevermore, let us all say, Amen.